So you're thinking about picking up a Lexus GX 460 and want to know if it's the right vehicle for you. We purchased this 2017 base model six months ago used and over that time period we have put over 10 thousand miles on it now that's a combination of a bunch of different types of driving everything from long extended road trips off-road and overland adventures as well as your everyday run-of-the-mill type driving running to the gym taking kids to and from activities there is a lot to love about the gx460 and there are a few things to not love about it you're watching backroad exploration my name is jared and this is the first impressions of the lexus gx460 I'm not going to talk about the specs of the GX because I find that boring. You likely won't remember it, and it's really easy to look up online. This video is really about my impressions of the GX, and before I can jump into those, I think it's important to talk about intended use because outside of budget, intended use is the number one factor that should be taken into any consideration with a vehicle. We wanted a vehicle that was off-road capable, had an optional third row, could tow, and had good enough aftermarket support that we could build it into a capable off-road vehicle and it was reliable and dependable enough to be able to get into the remote backcountry of Utah as a family without any hesitations and the GX fits that bill really well. If you're really looking for more of a general use city-based review of the GX460, this really isn't the video for you and there are some excellent ones on YouTube about that. Honestly, if you're not planning on taking the GX off-road, I don't really know why you're buying it. The reality is there's a lot of other vehicles in the price range and segment that offer similar or better features at a better price point if you're never planning on taking it off-road because the GX is a body on frame vehicle. It allows you to do a lot of modifications. It makes it so that it's dependable and sturdy so that you can be able to handle the rigors of off-road, but it also makes it heavier, less fuel efficient and things like that. If you're really planning on never leaving the pavement, I would suggest that you go look at like one of the mid-size crossovers that are going to give you better fuel economy, a little bit more creature comforts, all at a better price. The GX, in my opinion, is the perfect vehicle for families or individuals that want to have an off-road capable SUV, but is still small and compact and has good aftermarket support for adventures. I briefly want to talk about the looks of the GX. Overall, I think it has really clean, nice lines, and it looks like a luxury SUV to me on the exterior. I do wish that it had a little bit less of a natural rake. Um, the lift kit has helped with that, but it's still a little bit more when we load it up completely with gear, that helps even more. But overall, it still has a little bit more of a forward rake than I would like. I do know that the front fascia or grille is a very polarizing topic amongst GX fans. Uh, the 470, which was its predecessor, has a much more rounded front end where this kind of has these pointy juts on it and some people really dislike it. I don't mind it. It probably isn't my favorite choice, but overall, I think the GX is a good looking vehicle. Inside is quite comfortable and very roomy for the vehicle in this segment. I'm 6'2 and a big guy and it's really easy for me to find a nice comfortable position for long road trips where I'm not completely taking away all the legroom from someone behind me. We've gone on five plus hour long trips multiple times and there's no fatigue that I've experienced due to the overall interior comforts of the vehicle. Overall, I really like the leather seats in the GX. They're heated, they're soft enough to be comfortable, but they're still firm enough that you don't feel like you're gonna sink away into the seat as you're driving. I could get nitpicky about some of the things in the interior, like the faux wood on the steering wheel and on the shifter and a few little weird things like that. But overall, the finish is quite nice. The only thing that I dislike in the interior, and this definitely goes in the hate things about the GX, is the infotainment center. It's absolutely ridiculous. It looks like you stepped into a vehicle that's 10 years older than this one actually is. Um, I really dislike that you, if you want to change the fan speed there's not a button for that you have to click the climate button and then adjust the fan speed on the touch screen there's plenty of space on the side here where you could have a fan speed button i like just generalized buttons i feel like 
as newer cars are coming out and this feels very old and dated to me but even the newer cars are moving more to your touch screens and i don't know i personally just like a nice button i don't want to have to mess with the entertainment but if you look at like the mapping and things like that it just it really does look like they took this out of a vehicle that's 10 years older than it is and that's kind of because they did because it's been around for so long i know that toyota and lexus have made nice improvements to the infotainment centers on the new releases of vehicles but this in comparison to other vehicles of the same price range and age, it's like taking a step back in time, which is disappointing to me. Now the rest of the cockpit area is really nice and comfortable. The center console has, it's pretty deep, it's comfortable. You can adjust the armrest positions, which I actually find to be kind of nice. Um, the glove box is small, but usable. Everything in the front cockpit, I think is really, really nice outside of the infotainment center. The second row is actually really comfortable. You could easily fit three adults back here. Um, it's perfect for our three kids. There's no problems as far as space goes. As I mentioned, plenty of space for me right now. The driver's seat is in like the exit vehicle position where auto moves to when you put it into park. And there's still room for me where my knees aren't jamming into this seat. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be able to carry, you know, larger teenagers or adults in the back, they're gonna be fine. Three adults would be tight for really long trips, but if you were just running around in town or something, wouldn't be an issue at all. While these controls and buttons are a little big, they actually work well. Our kids love that they have heated seats back here, and it's nice that they can control the temperature on their own so that we're not having to deal with them being hot or cold. You can see in the rear seat, there's plenty of room for Wyatt, but he's only 10. In a year or two, he'll be too tall to fit back here. My guess is, as a 12, 13 year old, is probably the max that you can put in the third row and still have leg room. With the third rows folded down, the rear cargo area is actually quite spacious, especially if you're someone who doesn't need these seats, you can take them down. That lowers the overall platform height and gives you even more storage, which I know a lot of people like to do. Now I know that the rear swing gate can be a little bit of a controversial topic. Some people love it, some people hate it. I actually really like it. This is going to make a excellent platform or canvas for a table that will fold down and other gear and accessories that I can put here. Additionally, you can mount a spare tire to the swing gate, which takes it out from underneath the vehicle, which I think is another added bonus. The only downside of it at all to me is that no one can figure out the door latching system because it is a little bit different. So when you're picking up like grocery pickup or something, you're always having to explain to them how it works. I want to talk about the on-road driving before we jump into off-road because the reality is we're going to spend most of the time driving on-road in these vehicles. The GX is a pleasure to drive. The V8 in it is not overly powerful, but it's nice and smooth and gives you way more power than you would get out of almost any other vehicle in the segment that's not turbocharged. So it's a very reliable power plant. The transmission is reliable. So you have a really nice, comfortable vehicle to drive that you can depend on. It is very good on the highway and on the freeway, which I really like because as we're going into Southern Utah frequently for our off-road adventures, I wanna be able to cruise at nice freeway speeds and still have plenty of power to pass and things like that. In fact, completely loaded down with gear and on I-70, we're able to go 80 miles an hour, no problem at all. It's very comfortable. I don't feel like I'm pushing the vehicle beyond its limits or anything like that. Additionally, it feels fairly planted, although it is a narrow vehicle, so you are gonna get a little bit of body roll, and now that we have lifted it, there's definitely more noticeable body roll than it had before. You're gonna experience that with any vehicle, but if you're used to driving like a full-size SUV, you're gonna notice that more in this than you would in another vehicle. By far, one of my favorite things about the GX as far as on-road driving goes is it's so quiet. Because you're buying a premium luxury SUV, it just has better sound deadening than you get in like a 4Runner or a Jeep or other vehicles kind of in this size segment. When you close the doors, it has a nice thud. There's really good just overall door seals and sound deadening in this. Even with our all-terrain tires at freeway speeds, it's quite quiet in there and it makes it so that long drives don't get Get noise fatigue and things like that. Now I want to talk about the fun stuff, off-roading, which is why we purchased this particular vehicle. The GX460 is actually a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado with a Lexus body kit on it. That vehicle was designed for other markets other than North America. It's used a ton in Australia as a family SUV that is also very off-road capable. 
it makes it so that there's a lot of good aftermarket support for this vehicle. Everything from lift kits to roof racks to bumpers, anything that you want to do to make this off-road and overline capable is available to you, which is really nice. And because it's so popular, it means that there's multiple options, which helps drive the price down. Still not as affordable as things like some vehicles for the 4Runner and some that are a little bit more popular, but you can still get a lot of great accessories for this vehicle at a reasonable price. The spectrum of terrain types for off-roading is huge. If you've watched my channel a lot, you know that I like to go on nice, fun, mildly technical off-road tracks. I am not a rock crawler. If you're going to be a rock crawler, I wouldn't buy the GX460. It isn't saying that you can't make this vehicle capable of doing that. You can, you can put 35s on it with trimming and things like that. But the reality is if you wanted to be able to go just about anywhere in Utah, other than some hardcore trails in Moab, this vehicle is capable of doing it. And especially with a mild lift, a little bit bigger tires to give you a little bit, little bit better ground clearance, you're gonna be able to do anything you want. For desert two track, National Forest Service roads, all of the national parks in Utah and surrounding areas, the GX is gonna be perfect for it. I've had the chance to get it out multiple times on some of my overland adventures, and the reality is it performs awesome. The four wheel drive system is very good, it's capable and reliable, and the size of this vehicle is perfect in my opinion. As far as off-roading goes, it's narrow enough to go down almost any trail, but it's still long enough to be able to fit all of your gear. Now, if you're gonna go on really long adventures where you wanna have completely unconnected support, I'm saying you know five to 10 days, it's gonna get tight in a GX as far as space goes. I can get my family of five and our dog out for three to five days and be fine. Beyond that, you're starting to run into problems as far as just overall space to take what you need. And the reality is, is that's if you're just like base camping. If you're driving each and every day, you're gonna have to be going in to fill up fuel and things like that. That is a downside of the GX. It doesn't have a massive fuel tank. Because it's paired with the V8, it doesn't get that good of gas mileage. We average around 16 miles to the gallon with it, with our lift and oversized tires. Of course, when we're off-road, that gets even worse. A lot of people go and get aftermarket tanks. I'm not saying that you do or don't need to do that, but I've done a ton of exploring in Utah, and in my opinion, the only reason you need an aftermarket tank is if you're unwilling to just stop into one of the small towns on your adventures to fill up fuel. Often, depending on the trails and areas that you're going to, you're traveling through them anyways. And so it's not a big deal to stop. There's almost no trails in Utah that you can drive over 100 miles and not run into civilization where you're gonna need to fill up fuel. Obviously, you have way more than 100 miles of range, but the point is, is while I think it is somewhat of an annoyance having to fill up, it isn't a limiting factor in my opinion. You can plan routes where you can, you know, take a ton of miles and avoid complete towns, but Utah has most of its towns in its rural areas are really small. You're stopping in, you're filling up fuel, which is actually good for the economy there, maybe grabbing a quick treat out of the gas station and then moving on. If you followed my adventures long, you know that I've been all over Utah in a Jeep Wrangler that has similar range. I've almost never had to take spare fuel. If I am, it's more out of a precautionary measure than an actual need. One of the biggest benefits of the GX is the price point. Because it's a luxury SUV, you get a lot of vehicle for not a ton of money if you're willing to buy one that's a couple of years old. If you're just going and picking one up off the dealership lot brand new, they're a little bit pricey but they take a pretty big depreciation hit after the first couple of years, and then they really start to plateau and bottom out after that. And so we picked up this 2017, we purchased it for $38,000, it had around 37,000 miles on it when we bought it, and I feel like it was a pretty good deal. We were watching for a long time, and I've noticed since then, just kind of jumping in and checking, looking around, kind of seeing prices, they're all still hovering around in that price range even as the miles start to creep up. So overall, it is a depreciating asset as all vehicles are, but it isn't as bad of a jump as other vehicles in some areas. Holds its value well, it's really comfortable to drive, it's reliable and dependable, and so you're gonna be able to take it into the back country and have a lot of confidence in your vehicle and not be worrying about issues with breakdowns and things like that as long as you're properly maintaining it. To wrap up my first impressions, I have to say I'm really pleased with the GX. It's comfortable, it's capable, it's 
adaptable enough that I can turn it into a really good off-roader and still be able to handle all of our family needs, which is basically the reason that we purchased it. If I was only going to be running around in town, I probably would have picked up something different and would suggest that for you too. But at the same time, I see tons of people where it's clear they never have any intention of taking this off-road. And honestly, that's good for those of us who do want to because it allows us to have a really good used market to buy from of vehicles that have been very well maintained, have never been used or abused, and are ready for us to do that to them. If you want to follow my GX adventures, please like and subscribe. I plan on taking this all over Utah throughout the next couple of years, and it's going to be fun as I build this out. Thanks so much for watching.